stuck. Just the walk of shame? Yeah. Let's go get a strap. It's really big and it's not round, which makes rotating it awkward. It's all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are, building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. Hi guys, I'm Dave and welcome to episode 19. Today, we are welding up this Chrome Molly cage for Project Wombat. We love working with Chrome Molly. It's clean. This particular stuff is polished. This is T45, and just look at it. It's beautiful stuff to work with. It does what it needs to do. And if you come over here, and as you can see, we've had the bender on full speed this week. So James has made these battery trays. This car is going to house two 12 volt batteries in the back of it inside the chrome molly seat box so the recaro seats are going to live here and over there and the center is going to house his baby suit so like a recaro say one years old to maybe i think it's a four years old seat so and in the back darren's just welded up the stays now you see the beautiful cross that we've created Coming to work this morning, walked through the door, didn't even get a chance to put my bag down. Dave walks over to me and said that there's someone coming at about dinner time to have a go in the 1.30 we've just got back. Uh, the only problem with that being is the fans weren't working properly, so all morning I've been remaking all the wire into the fans and this little fuse box over here. So guys, sorry I wasn't here last week. I had a bit of a bug that was seemed very tedious to shift. So I'm back here now and we had Dirty 130 out today. We took it to the sand pit and as you can see, she's living up to her name. This car is just something else. It's got absolute monstrous torque to suit the monstrous tires and it does what it says on the tin. We had to call that the Ultra 4 car to rescue it, unfortunately, because I forgot to put the front prop shaft on. But there you have it. It's an absolute machine, and if anyone wants to come and try it out, feel free. 
So, um, Willow Energy, you wanted to know what we're doing with this sprinter, but so what we are doing with this sprinter is, as you can see here, these beautiful Victron Energy lithium batteries. The original people that built this truck, um, unfortunately, didn't understand power and how power works. So we're basically upscaling the whole spec of this vehicle. We've given him two lithium monstrous batteries with Bluetooth monitoring, everything. If you look down here, I fabricate this cradle from scratch to carry these two batteries. There's foam, double-sided tape inside here to keep the batteries supported so they can't move around when it's overlanding and shaking on terrain. But we've given this car these two batteries so Dave, the guy who owns it, can basically, let's say, go out for a whole week and live off these batteries. Obviously topped up by solar, say 12 hours of sunlight maybe, but he basically wants to live in this truck, self-sufficient, without a generator rattling away, and just basically enjoy it. So that's what we're going to give him. We're going to give him the full Victron works on this truck. These have got to be the coolest e-bike I've ever seen. So our friends at ORE gave us this little bearing kit. So Dave who owns this Sprinter has tasked me with the job of basically building a swing away wheel carrier to carry two of these e-bikes. Those of you that followed our previous episode, we built this to carry a Ducati Scrambler originally. So Dave wants to keep that idea, but now he's, let's say, gone into the eco world. He's bought two of these for when he goes off camping for him and his partner. So we're going to basically create a swing away carrier. So most of you have seen the ORE wheel carrier on Defenders. Ethos has got one. Most of our builds have got one. So I contacted him and I said, look, I don't see the point in me fabricating something when they've got it on the shelf. So I pinged him a message and I said, dude, send me a carrier. So he's kindly supplied us a full bearing kit, some pins. So let's see what we've got in here. So they machine these in the UK, which, as you know, we're super proud about using UK products. So what was the point in reinventing the wheel when Chris does it so well anyway? So as you can see here, that's a tapered bush with some nice chunky threads on. It's nice and strong. Our plan is we're really good, basically going to build a big mount on this corner. And we're going to have two of these working sequentially together. So imagine the rack pivot on and off and the other end will carry a big latch. So. Hopefully next week, guys, you'll see what we've got made. Luigi. Right, Louis Vuitton. You need to tell people what you've been doing this week. So we've received these back from the paint shop this week and um, Dekar, who painted this for us, have done an amazing job. And Louis's done a fantastic job of putting it all together. As you can see, it's starting to come together really well. There's a few subtle upgrades, so we've gone for electric fan. We've gone for a creative aluminium cooling kit. So this is an oversized cooling kit because this car, if you come around here, Chris, has got a very tidy turbo. So this has got a turbo Technics turbocharger. It's got a few little modifications to help with spooling. This is running our stage three injectors. So this will basically give the car a lot more low down lift. So It'll bang a bit more fuel in early on to give it that, that better excitement, if you like. So we all know TDIs are pretty lazy. So this one is going to get up and go a little bit earlier on. And the Turbo Technics is going to give you the oomph further on because this is a VNT turbo. So those of you who don't know that, it's got variable vane technology. So it can act like a small turbo and also like a big turbo, depending upon boost pressures. So, here's the first left-hand drive 130 that we've, we've actually put our hands on. So, this one's off to the USA, to a shooting client. We're doing this for a UK company called Kingsman. So, they're going to transform this car into the ultimate shooting truck. It's probably going to have a beautiful big draw system in the back for your guns and a few other bits and bobs. But other than that, it's going to be one hell of a machine. We're going to fully restore this motor right down to the bottom end. So, the bottom end's completely out. 
I think it's going to need a bore, so it's a bit smoky. But other than that, the car is actually a very tidy example. So I've not actually seen one this tidy, but I believe this car spent its early years in France. So corrosion, etc., is being obviously on its side because obviously climate, etc. They haven't got the salts that we've got. But yeah, we're really looking forward to getting our teeth into this. And tomorrow the motor's going to be coming out. I'm going to start the rebuild. So guys, some of you might be thinking, why is Legacy back with us? Legacy is back here because we had a malfunction. These are the e-brakes. So what happened is these actually sheared off. So we don't know what happened. High spec are working alongside us to figure out what happened. So it might have been a wiring issue, might have been an ECU issue, but end of the day, we've got a new set of calipers from them and we're gonna be fitting these today and then trialing the car out and actually seeing where the problem came from. Because at the end of the day, Mistakes happen and we just want to rectify it for our customer. Hi guys, welcome back, I'm Sam. If anybody who's watching this channel makes water-cooled TIG torches with a flexible head that you can remove fairly easily, not naming no names, CK Worldwide, I'd really love one of those flexible head torches um, because, you know, for example, something like this, there's a lot of very tight spaces here. I've got, I'm having to reach around things and so on and so forth. And I don't have much flex on this head. I can't, you know, point this in any direction I want. I'm fairly limited to around there, which can make things awkward sometimes. So. You know, it's one thing to consider if you're looking at upgrading any of your TIG uh, machines or parts is ergonomics. Is that comfortable to hold for 10 hours? It's not, I'm telling you, so. You will have seen that we've got the offender back in the workshop for a couple of upgrades. Um, one of those being is the exhaust system is we've decided to slim it down. So beforehand we had two silencer boxes and we had two separate exhaust systems if you like um, where they just they just collect one time before the silencers and then they split into two separate exhausts so what that's that's a lot of tubing to have underneath a truck and all of it is very hot um, with it still being four-wheel drive as well we've got a lot shafts pipes fuel lines filters there's, there's, there's not a lot of room so by using this box and this design we're keeping all the tubes and all the exhaust that we need on one side of the chassis, which means we've got the other side clear for all anything else that we need to run run the truck. Oh. That over. So here we have an X pipe. So we're going from we've got two two and a half inch tubes here, and that's as it comes out of the silencer, and then we merge into two three inch tubes here and they go out to the tailpipes. But because we're running a bypass valve so that we're bypassing the silencer, that needs to come back into the exhaust because we still want, we want the loud mode to come out the back. We don't want it out the bottom or anything like that. So what I've had to do is merge this bypass tube back into the X pipe. And I've done it right in the middle um, just so that it keeps it as efficient as possible. But that was quite a challenge. Today I'm going to be welding on a couple of hangers um, just to support the weight of the this all this. That's the gas. Another important tip for, for TIG welding is don't forget to clean your filler rod. It's all well and good cleaning your, your work, but you want to clean the metal that you're about to put into your work. So don't forget that, it's never clean out of the box. 
putting it every time. Does not compute. Previously, the, the system that was on this truck, it was, it was clamped to the chassis, maybe one, one fix in every foot, if you like, on both sides. And what that's caused is, as the exhaust has got hot and it's all growing, because it's got nowhere to go, because it's clamped in so many places, it's, it's buckled and twisted, which has sort of pushed it into the chassis, which means it's touching in some places, which when the truck's running causes a vibration and it's, it's not really something you want on your truck, really. So yeah, you can just see I've made this bent bracket here. It's just a, just a hanger. I put it in a lathe and made it a bit pretty and shiny, but so the idea of that is here's the rubber hanger. So it means that when the exhaust grows and it wants to move, it's got all this space. It can move, but it won't never come out because it is fixed at that end as well. So it can only move a certain amount, but it can move, which is the important aspect of this. Um, it, I, you know, I don't want it to fix it in position. It needs to be hanging there so it can grow and shrink as the, the material heats up and cools back down. I've had some problems with um, a fender. Basically, there's something wrong with the running. It's a bit of an intermittent issue. We're unsure, is it a leak? Or, I'll be honest, it's kind of really confusing us. So, we're doing some tests now. Sam's made this beautiful bung. And what we're gonna do is fill the whole intake full of smoke and basically see if we've got any leaks anywhere. Because if air is getting in, into this car where it's not measured, this is what's gonna cause an issue. And we think that is the problem. So guys, we've had a new delivery from Mars and Chassis. As you can see here, we've got a 90, 200 TDI, we've got a TD5 90, and we've got a 130. As you can see down here, this is the bolt-in cradle idea. So our mounts bolt to this face, so there is no welding needed to this chassis at all. So it's literally fresh off the press, out the galvanized tank, fresh to us, ready to put our mounts in. If you look around here, this customer requested that he wanted his vehicle's VIN number putting in. His original chassis is totally corroded. So we've given him stamped at the factory and before it was sent to the galvanizing tank. So nothing's gonna rust, the, VIN, the number's not gonna corrode through. They're ready to go. So these are getting ready for paint and then they'll be turning into trucks shortly. So this is a 1958 Series 2 chassis. This is also made by Marsland. This has been delivered today for a project that we've got in the pipeline. So we've never fitted one of these before, but this time round, we thought the chassis is too far gone, so we've gone for one of these. So if you want one of these guys, get in touch. The £2,500 plus the VAT. So let's transform your series for you today. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please drop a comment, please share it, and make sure you tell all your friends about this channel. We're trying to grow it the best we can. So tune into the next, uh, tune into the next episode, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.